Okay, welcome everybody back to ABC Murders. Now we're going to try to do this fun one here. What do the victims have in common? Ooh. Betty had a photo of Donald. The first victim was called Archer. This Archer had a violent husband. Donald was a violent man. Betty had problems with the boys. Jesus. Okay, there's a lot of stuff here. Alright, so I'm trying to figure this out. <sighs> I'll try that as why. Well, actually, now that'll be a why. The first two victims suffered from bad throat, and that was precisely the speciality of the third victim, Dr. Clark. We have a lead. It would pay to take a closer look at the medical records of Dr. Clark's patients. We'll do so during our next visit to Justin. I will do it myself, mon ami. You must remain in London just in case ABC sends us another letter. Very well, as you wish. Lead. I'll be able to find out who's doing all this. Which we already know he's a doctor of some kind. Or Thank name. you for coming, Mr. Poirot. Lady Clark is waiting for you in her bedroom on the first floor. Please excuse me, I cannot stay for the interview. I have to take Miss Gray to the station to see our lawyer in Torquay. Ask if Thora is going on holiday. Ask if Thora is leaving for a job. Are you going on holiday, mademoiselle? Not exactly, Mr. Poirot. Miss Gray very kindly stayed with me to settle my brother's affairs. But naturally, she prefers to find a position in London. Ah, très bien. I'll be absent all morning, Mr. Poirot, but the nurse is coming soon. She's to ensure that the dose of medicine doesn't make our patient drowsy. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Have a nice trip, mademoiselle. It would be rude to make Lady Clark wait any longer. It is now the right time. It's closed. It would be rude to make Lady Clark wait any longer. Okay. This poor woman is very ill. <sighs> the 
This woman is suffering. She is in no state to have a conversation. I'm not trying to talk to her anyways. Right. Mr. Poirot? My respects, madame. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Have you seen the nurse? She should have been here by now. Oh, I'm sorry. The telephone in the hall is ringing. It's closed. Lady Clark is in pain. I have to give her an injection of morphine to ease her suffering. It's closed. Lady Clark is in pain. I have to give her an injection of morphine to ease her suffering. Okay. Maybe the phone will still be ringing by the time I get down. The Clark residence. Detective Hercule Poirot speaking. How do you do, Mr. Poirot? I'm Lady Clark's nurse. I wanted to let you know that I won't be able to come for her injection today. Might Miss Gray be able to do it? She has just left, but I will take care of it. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Um, you'll find the skeleton key to open the medicine cabinet hidden in the lion trophy. You can count on me. Au revoir, mademoiselle. Oh, thank you kindly. Goodbye, Mr. Poirot. Here is the skeleton key. April 1925, Aceh Province, Sumatra. Okay. It is not the right time. Now let's go upstairs, huh? Give her a medicine. Lady Clark is in pain. I have to give her an injection of morphine to ease her suffering. It's closed. Mr. Poirot, oh, I feel better now. Thank you for your help. Ask what she has to say about the murder. Remind her of the invitation. Madame, you are tired, so I will get straight to the point. What can you tell me about this business? What business, Mr. Poirot? No doubt. You wish to talk to me about what happened to your husband? Ah, yes. Oh, poor Carmichael. Has the madman who killed him been caught? Not yet, chère madame. There was a great many people in Chester on the day of the murder. Indeed. People go straight to the beach. They don't come near Coombside. So, there were no strangers around the house that day? Who said that? The people who live here. Your brother-in-law, Miss Gray. Miss Gray? Oh, I don't like her. Franklin wanted her to stay, but I insisted she should go. 
immediately. You are entitled to do so, naturally. I'm pleased that you approve. The others have been taken in by her. But at least you can see through that self-pity act. See what she's up to. Oh. This subject would probably be useful to me. This couple appears to be having fun. Lady Clark and Sir Carmichael were very happy. But they did uh, not have any children. Huh. I've done that, all right? Make sure. She is sleeping. I must find a way to wake her up gently. It's not the right time. I must find a way to wake her up gently. I must find a way to wake her up gently. Okay, fine, I gotta go wake her up. This subject would probably be useful to me. She's sleeping. 
I must find a way to wake her up gently. It's gotta be over here. Oh, there's some medicine area. I've finished with this subject. This subject would probably be useful to me. Okay. We have three columns now. And a spring. What are we making here? I didn't even know that was sitting there. How about that? I'm gonna say silver goes next. And then I'm gonna say this goes last just cause... that Hastings will not be cross with me. <laughs> I'm sure he won't. No. Okay, it ain't playing no music, so... The bronze comb is preventing me from positioning this one. The other comms are preventing me from positioning this one.
Oh, what are we talking about? Oh, Carmichael had great esteem for her. But for me, she was nothing but a hypocrite. Proof indicated You're probably right, madame. You have seen through her. I'm so pleased that I've convinced you. Admit being wrong about Thora. Remind her that Thora is an orphan. Oh. Oh no. Rex. Well, I appear to have been wrong about Thora Gray. So you all agree how nice it is to be all of the same mind. Admit being wrong about Thora. Remind her of the. Reminds her that, that I took care of her. Fuck it. Why? Miss Gray did look after you very well, though. Outwardly. But she's hiding something. I think she tried to poison me. Miss Gray? A poisoner? But everybody appears to like her. It proves she knows what she's doing. She's manipulative and she's a liar. A liar? Let's see, didn't she say that on the day of the crime nobody was around Coombside? That is correct. Well, at 11 o'clock I saw her talking to someone. Really? And what was this man like? An ordinary sort of man with a very plain face. Oh, I don't remember well. Was he a gentleman? No, he was not, not a gentleman. It would be best to leave her to sleep now. Yeah. Yes. The telephone in the hall is ringing. Okay, I'm gonna end this right here. Um, if y'all enjoyed, leave a like. And if you're new, subscribe for more. And I'll see y'all back on the next episode. Later. Thank mm -hmm. you.